Right then, welcome back to the channel, Stephen Alson, and today we are talking about Marcel Sabit. So the man that came in on loan, the man that kicked off at Bayern Munich to try and get to Manchester United, and the man that I believe deserves a full-time place in Manchester United squad. I'm going to get started and tell you why, and let me know in the comments whether you agree or disagree um, after the video's finished. Right, let's get into it then. Number one, versatile. After probably Bruno, I would say Marcel Sabitzer is our most versatile midfielder. Right-footed player, uh, loads of experience uh, in a variety of positions across the pitch. As he broke through, he was a bit of a winger. That's developed into a bit more of a creator than a playmaker. And and I've been very impressed with his defensive output as well since he's been playing a little bit further back. And as we've seen him played in central midfield, um, he's really shown us that. And of course, he's got the ability to be able to play as a wide attacker, someone between the lines, a number 10, a number 8. He's even played as a centre forward, or we've not seen him that for that for United just yet, but I wouldn't rule that out the way this season's going. Um, obviously, for United, we've seen him playing as one of the deeper two in the vast majority of games. Um, like Ericsson, like Bruno, he seems to be very competent on the ball. Technically, absolutely bang on. Got no qualms with him there, but he's a little bit more robust. Uh, and in that sense, a little bit more actually like Casemiro in that role um, than I ever thought was was likely when we signed him. Now, I actually think that there's a bit of a blend of both uh, Casemiro and Ericsson in the way he plays. Uh, possibly not quite hitting the same heights that both of them are able to hit in their position, but this is a squad player. Uh, and I think as as far as like a, a bar goes for squad players, Marcel Sabitzer as a squad player would be very, very high up there in terms of what he would offer. Now, he might not see it the same way. He might think he's a first-team player. Um, but he reminds me a lot in this sense of what Jisung Park offered. Maybe not quite the same level of energy, but the same sort of uh, football intelligence and technical proficiency is right there for me. So this is a Jisung Park sort of, can I put him there and can he do a job and can I trust him to do that? Absolutely. And that's what Jisun Park offered uh, to Manchester United. And he's shown at Leipzig as well that like, he's also got goal scoring and goal creation. In 2021, he scored nine goals for Leipzig, 16 goals a season before. And we know, obviously, as we saw recently, that he can do the gritty stuff. A few weeks ago, he made 11 ball recoveries against Leicester, which was more than any other single player on the pitch. And if United are looking to get back to the top, you need someone who has got versatility. You can't just have people who go, that's my position, that's it game over, you got to go and get players who know how to be able to fill in and are tactically flexible and astute enough to be able to do a job in multiple different places. Number two, and as I just mentioned, squad players can be this good. Sabitz is obviously a very, very good player. Uh, and I don't think we've even seen the best of him just yet. I think there's more to come from Sabitzer. Uh, and I hope he goes on to bigger things. I hope I get to see him lifting some more trophies in a United shirt. However, even if he doesn't, you've still got a very, very handy player there for us. And what's interesting, he probably isn't close to being first choice in any of the positions that he can play in, which in itself can be a frustration for him, but certainly an absolute asset to someone like Eric Ten Hag. Now, Casemiro, Eriksen, Fernandez, right now that's probably our strongest trio. Um, dependent on the opposition, of course. But I would say, like, on any random Saturday afternoon, if you've got those three fit, those three can play for you, and that would probably be your strongest midfield trio. But Sabitz is not that far away from that. You know, we've always believed that Fred, McTominay should be squad players, and I think I'm on record a few times saying that once those guys end up as squad players, then you've got some real players in front of them, and I'd be fine with them guys being squad players. But Marcel Sabitza, I think, comes in and sits in between those two groups. Where he's not a first-choice player, he's certainly not on the same level as Fred and McTominay. I think he's in his own little category, and if that's what we can create as our squad, as our backup players, as our fourth midfield three... I think that would be excellent for us. And like I said, he's much better than both of those two guys. And you've got to have high standards. In 2008-2009, Tevez was back up. That's the, the sort of level you want to reach. You Here's an interesting thing, right? So in, in football teams, and this might be uh, ubiquitous across, 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 across team sports, but certainly in football, you do not make a team better by improving the best player. You make a team better by improving the worst player. 
and it's uh, a little bit counterintuitive for some people. Like, well, hang on, if I just get messy, my team's going to be so much better. And it is. But to genuinely really raise the level of a team, what you constantly do is replace the worst player in the team until your team is elevated. Because a team is always going to be let down by a player than it is elevated by the one at the top end. So having players like Marcel Sabitza as being the guy that comes in as your rotation, as your weak option, is a massive, massive strength for Manchester United. And if you want to be emulating what they did in 2008, then you have to be doing the sort of things that they did in that sense. Your Jishon Parks, your Tevezes. These are the boys that sometimes don't even make the bench. But that's how good the squad is. Number three, United's recruitment is improving. So Sabitza was signed at the absolute last minute in the window. Uh, and it came out of nowhere. At least we think it came out of nowhere. United found out about the injury uh, to Ericsson the day before deadline day and somehow managed to get Sabitza over the line inside 24 hours. There was probably a large element of luck in terms of the availability and in terms of um, the injury happening when it did and not like three days later. But the fact that we managed to get a player in of such quality who was willing to come uh, to work underneath Ten Hag, willing to come to Manchester to leave Bayern Munich, there might be a bit of a live list of players that's already doing the rounds inside Carrington that the, the club are keeping an eye on. Maybe they've got a contingency. And to be honest, if I was a recruitment uh, staff member or even head of a recruitment at a club, one of the first things I would do is I would go through every single one of my 25-man st uh, squad, starting with my starting 11. Go, okay, speak to the boss. What's our best 11? Okay. And then sit with them and go, okay, all right, this guy's out for the season. What do we do? This guy's out for the season. What do we do? Go through the whole starting 11 until I know I've got backup for every single player. And it can't be the same one. I can't go through three midfielders and have one guy be the backup for all of them. Number four, Ten Hag is serious about winning. And it feels like the club, uh, at least on the surface of things, is listening to him. We seem to get Casemiro over the line after a bad start. We did go and get reinforcements in, in January when they were needed. Now, we didn't break the bank for them. We've got a couple of lads on loan, which is the least that they could do, but they've done less than that in the past when it's also been very obvious that we needed it. You know, we have had people put blocks on it. Yeah, not really interested in doing that at the moment. No money available, no signings available. We actually had an active January for once. Um, and that could have happened in this January, but you lose Ericsson on the day before uh, deadline day so many clubs including Manchester United previously would have been like well that's just unfortunate isn't it see you in June does it show Ten Hag has been very demanding does it show that he's been given a level of control does it show that he's been given a level of trust all of those things to me are positive things that Eric Ten Hag is trusted uh, and, and allowed to have the sort of authority that you hope a manager does have from within the club and number five there is absolutely more to come. Like we mentioned at the start, Sabitza has got many more levels to play through just yet. I think we will see more of him in the Europa League, more effectiveness from him in the Europa League. Not to say that I think he's poor in the Premier League. I just think that's where his particular set of talents will really come to the front for us. Players joining the Premier League from the Bundesliga um, generally take, before you start typing Haaland, I know you'd let, I saw your finger on the H right there. He's a bit of a freak. Um, generally, players that are coming, adapting from Bundesliga, it takes them a minute or two, generally. Um, and I don't think he's been poor at all since he's, he's come here. La Liga players generally tend to adapt a little bit quicker. So Sabitza might still be adapting, but he's absolutely one that I would look to try and make permanent if he wants to stay here. Going into the latter part of the season, and I actually hope next season he is a Manchester United player, I think you'll see even more from him. Uh, and I think he could be a huge asset for Manchester United. He is a player with top-level experience. From all we can see, he looks like an excellent professional. Uh, and although he's not quite the level of winner, the likes of Varane and Casemiro are, he's played for a couple of years um, at one of the elite clubs in European football in Bayern Munich and obviously spent seven years at RB Leipzig. I like Sabitzer. And I think a Sabitzer taking it up the next level would be huge. And I think there's a lot of character in Marcel Sabitzer as a player and I think having more players with more character like Casemiro like Bruno like Ericsson like Varane like Martinez is not a bad thing it shows that the club has got leaders all over the pitch and to be winners you need to have that also when one of them players is injured he just gets to slot in 
doesn't care where he is. He just gets in and he gets on with it and he makes good decisions where he is on the pitch. Good player already. I see a ceiling in there that we've not unlocked yet. And I think a little bit more trust from those around him uh, and you'll really start to see the best of Marcel a bit. So, but I, for one, hope he stays. Let me know in the comments. Do you agree? Would you like to keep him around? And I'll see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.